When I was three years old, I dipped my arms in the water, and later to my mom's dismay, I complained that I had fractured them. It was then that my parents tried to teach me what is refraction. When I was six years old, I would go around with my father, collect people tree leaves, and immerse them into water, so that after a few months, when the flesh of the leaf wore away, I could observe its venation. I got my first telescope when I was 10, and I learned the basis of calculus when I was 12. The first time I worked in a lab, I was 13. I learned to ask questions about what I saw around me. It was like a cycle. I would see something around me, ask a question, get a satisfactory answer, and well, that would be it. But as you might expect, within a few years, I was full on into STEM. I could completely relate to it. For me, it was everything about me, and it was everything about the world. It seemed to have the answers to all the questions that I asked. But then, as it happens in the life of most girls in STEM, I started noticing the gender disparity that exists. Somehow, I would always end up being the only girl in my school's mathematics or physics team, sometimes the only girl in some competitions. And there are so, so many instances that I can recount where I have felt this emotion strongly. But then, you might have heard of this story quite a few times too. This is every STEM girl story. I spoke about girls in STEM wherever I could, about female mechanical engineers and female mathematicians. But then, observing and questioning is something that forms the basis of my thought process and understanding. And I observed. I observed the lack of women in STEM, and I observed something else as well. What about men in humanities? What about men in healthcare? in early education. Think about it for a moment. How many of you had a male English teacher in high school? How many of you have ever seen a male kindergarten teacher? Since grades one to 10, I haven't ever had a male English teacher. Yet, nobody talks about it. The only humanities section in my school has got four boys and 36 girls, but nobody seems to find that odd. The debate competition I went to last December had only one male contestant, but nobody seemed to notice that. I think that the problem is something bigger. It's about how the society weighs one career as heavier against the other. It's about how we treat one major or occupation to be more elite than the other. Studies in the US suggest that women make up about 9 to 16% of engineers and 21% of computer programmers. Now, these figures are really low, and we absolutely want them to go up. But these figures are also the ones that we have heard about. We talk about them, and we care about them. On the other hand, in the heat fields, that is in health, early education, and domestic roles, where the working population is similar in size, only 10% of nurses, yeah, nurses can actually be male, and 4% of primary school teachers are male in the USA as of 2017. These career options are not just unpopular choices amongst men, but they're also commonly devalued in the society. They're less talked about and they're less researched. Now, here is something to note. They're less researched. In short, there has been a lot of research that has been carried out about women in STEM, leading to increased media attention. And so we know about it more, and we talk about it more, we care about it more. But the question that arises here is that by talking so much about gender stereotypes in STEM, are we stereotyping the concept itself? Maybe. Our passions are being constantly overridden by societal bias. 
Most Indian kids want to be an engineer, not quite sure which one, and when you, maybe computer scientists. And may, when you ask them why, you get some interesting answers. It would be something like, oh, computer scientists have got really interesting jobs. Oh, but aren't the other jobs interesting? They are, but you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Most kids around my age have got the fields all wrong. Computer science is not all about programming. Aerospace engineering is not about the space. Cryptography, by no means, is about cryptocurrencies. The problem is that we are really vague about it. Our reason for often pursuing a career is because the society values it. And you are a part of your society, so you value it too. Currently, we operate on what I like to call the vertical level of career bias. And what do you hope to achieve is this, the horizontal level. And this matters to me and others of my age group because I'm 16 and I would soon be going into college, taking a step forward towards choosing a career. At this point of time, what I would appreciate the most is to pursue what I like, no matter how weird or how out of place it may seem to the society. For me, it means being able to pursue mathematics and behavioral science at the same time, but it may mean something else for someone else, and that is what I'm sure most teenagers would respect. So where do these differences start? Well, they start at our homes and our schools, and unfortunately, they start really young. We don't even realize how these inequalities spread. I remember, even when I was just six years old, in my first grade, I heard comments like, focus on science because that is what you're finally going to need. Now, this may seem like a piece of natural advice by our elementary school teachers, but they go a much longer way than that. These thoughts are just imprinted in the minds of the students of our country, and unfortunately, even the very basic education system may be implicitly promoting such practices. The fact that most schools have a specific cut-off for you in order to opt for science in 11th grade, it induces an immense sense of discrimination amongst the students that the adults have no clue about. Humanities is almost treated as the student's last resort. Those who cannot cope up with the science curriculum transfer to commerce, and then they have problems with that, they transfer to humanities. Not something that they would voluntarily choose. Another recent circular that caught my attention was the introduction of a two-level testing system in maths by CBSC in class 10. Only maths. Why not say social studies? The fact that you rank in the admissions examination process to colleges in India determines which major you would pursue is truthfully baseless. And then all these practices end up validating the fact that we do care about a career, occupation, or major more than the other. These very basic practices in our classroom, in our curriculum, they leave us biased in a way we never thought was possible. It's important that we raise these issues. Just because some things are the way they are, doesn't mean that they can't change. It's important that we learn to observe and question independently. And it's important that we remember that even a few decades ago, the question of why aren't there more females in STEM was also only a question. Yet today, it forms a crucial consideration in our society. All I can do is to raise such a question. What about men in humanities? What about men in healthcare and early education? Thank you.